Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have a special guest with us, Mr. Harsh Mandar, a well-known peace activist, human rights activist. He has worked for several decades among a variety of people. Karwa Mohabbat is virtually a household name. We are meeting today on the occasion of Gandhi Jayanti. It's the 153rd birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. We're going to discuss where the nation is today and where we're taking it in the context of Gandhian philosophy and Gandhi's actions. Uh, Mr. Mandir, you've been a peace activist. Is Gandhi an inspiring figure for you? Gandhi is uh, perhaps the central inspiration uh, for a lot of uh, my work. The Karwani Mohabbat was inspired most of all by the last months of Mahatma Gandhi's life, which I think are his finest uh, in, in the midst of the horror of partition violence, a million people killing each other. And uh, he was not here to celebrate India's Independence Day. He was walking uh, in Nakoli and in Calcutta among families who had lost their loved ones. Um, so I think what Gandhi Gandhiji stood for uh, uh, is uh, is what is being contested in the India of today. Uh, that is the central question. Uh, you might have the present regime. Uh, claiming uh, uh, sort of uh, allegiance to Mahatma Gandhi, but yes. Mahatma Gandhi was not, uh, you know, um, you know this uh, Swachh Bharat. He was not, uh, you know, his predominant message to India was not. He stood for many things. Um, he also wanted sanitation, but that was not what he lived, and certainly not what he died for. He died for the idea of a, a, a kind inclusive uh, country uh, of equal citizenship uh, and uh, many things are told uh, you know Anis Kidwai recalls meeting Gandhiji of just a few months before his assassination uh, her husband had been killed in the partition riots trying to save lives she didn't even go through the full at that period she comes to Gandhiji and, and uh, finds him very distraught and he uh, Gandhiji says that uh, made, uh, my, my life's work will not be complete until a Muslim child cannot walk without fear in, uh, in this uh, city, in this country. So it is, it is in, in fulfillment of that imagination of Gandhi, of uh, figures in the freedom struggle, Bhagat Singh, uh, Maulana Azad, uh, Nehru, Patel, uh, and of course uh, the constitution. B.R. Ambedkar. I mean, it is. It is. It, we are. Uh, we are really battling whether we will fulfil uh, that imagination for India of a country of equal citizenship, regardless of which god you worship. So, when we look back at the last few years in particular, there have been a variety of movements, and the movements in India tend to invoke Gandhi every time. Now, can you just look at them from a Gandhian perspective? Uh, the CAA. Uh, the farmers' protest. I think you know the anti-CA protests. I mean, before one's eyes, uh, we saw it uh, unfold, and I I don't think any of us imagined that the country would rise up in the way that it did uh, spontaneously. Uh, in fact, I the day uh, CA uh, uh, was being you know debated in Parliament. Uh, I was thinking, what would Gandhi have ta taught us? And he talked about uh, um, duty of civil disobedience, that you must publicly disobey uh, a law that you regard unjust. Now, the problem that I, I but, he, but another part of, of civil disobedience was that you must demand punishment. Uh, because there's no point in breaking, you must publicly break the law that you regard as unjust and demand that you either punish me or you change the law. Now, the problem with the anti-CA was that uh, I would say I would refuse to, I will, and that's my pledge, I will not provide any documents to any government, uh, you know, I, I, with an NRC, with the CA. Uh, but if I don't produce the documents, uh, I am of an identity, I'm born in a Sikh family, which the law has been designed to protect me. So what do I do? So I had then declared that uh, I will, uh, I will, if an NRC starts based on this CA, 
law i will first declare myself you have to declare your religion yes i will declare myself to be muslim and this has been misunderstood many times i didn't say i will convert to islam i am an agnostic i will tell government first i register as a muslim and b i refuse to uh, uh, submit any documents to prove my indian citizenship and if and see if any of my muslim sisters and brothers are disenfranchised i demand that i should be treated in the same way that is what i learned so that was my act of uh, my tribute to gandhi but what the country did was a much bigger tribute uh, and it happened spontaneously uh, you really if you think about it it was the largest non violent public movement that we have seen in this country since mahatma gandhi's assassination and uh, it was the largest demonstration of hindu muslim unity that this country has been seen spontaneously for those 100 days i was called to address rallies every corner of the country i was very little in delhi i was actually all over the country yes that's right and it was terribly heartening to see you'd see huge crowds with only the national flag people with you know openly with their muslim and hindu identities sikh identities i we even went to punjab standing together in solidarity uh, and the two icons that spontaneously came up actually were very interesting because they never came together in life which was gandhi ji and dr ambedkar right. uh, um, and to my mind one is the symbol of gandhi ji was a symbol of radical love and dr ambedkar was the symbol uh, uh, for all time of radical equality and i think that that this movement was one that was you know held them up and and responded and no none of us can claim that we had anything to do with the planning of it it happened by people so i think that it was a movement that would have made uh, mahatma gandhi extremely proud because the the values that that it continuously you know and and i would also say that the farmers uh, struggles as well, as well it was not as um, you you walk through that place uh, it was with strong opposition to something but it was a place of friendship you you know you were welcoming somebody was giving you langar somebody was taking care of your shoes somebody was taking care of i mean so both of these were struggles of you know how do you fight hate and injustice without yourself uh, embodying hate and injustice and i think right. these two uh, movements are probably the most significant movements we've had uh, except for uh, probably the anti emergency movement i mean i think these are three significant movements we've had uh, across the country but the anti ca protest was was nationwide it, it also uh, unlike the anti emergency movement which was north indian uh, this enveloped all of india and the spirit of of uh, you know standing up proudly i mean every uh, every um, protest uh, meeting used to end uh, uh, with, with with a young uh, girl usually reading out the preamble of the constitution and everybody singing uh, uh, i mean so repeating it and then singing the national anthem i mean i don't know of any movement where the constitution becomes the icon of revolt yes uh, and and the national flag becomes the you know the parcham that you're holding up uh, you know symbolizing equal citizenship uh, so so uh, so i think that uh, 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 the anti-CA protests and the farmer struggles had their own idiom, but they uh, but they owed a lot also to Mahatma Gandhi. And I'll just give one last example uh, of what I uh, some in Shahin Bagh, uh, uh, as we know, uh, somebody who's now a union minister uh, had done the slogan "Desh ke gadaron ko, yes. goli maro saalon ko." and uh, and so on and uh, you know targeting uh, the protesters in the anti ca protest the women of shahin bagh said that we must give a fitting reply uh, to them and uh, they crafted their own slogan and i think we should all hold it to our hearts where they said desh ke sab pyaron ko they addressing these people as uh, you know you all your beloved people of this country phool uh, barsao saaron ko 
we shower all of you with flowers if we understood the spirit of uh, mahatma gandhi it is in this this kind of act but you have also met a large number of victims of uh, crimes committed by uh, mobs uh, crimes committed by neighbors and you have met victims of state oppression do they have the same feeling about gandhi do you find them invoking gandhi what is gandhi to people who have been victimized or I, the survivors of those yes. who have been killed I, i think that mahatma gandhi has has an extraordinary uh, position uh, you know in 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 the public uh, understanding and consciousness of uh, of india's poor and particularly india's minorities and this again i i have learned over, over a long time uh, in one of my speeches during the anti ca protest just the, it was in jamia the day after uh, uh the the yes. students had been killed and it said said many things i said this is a battle not against one law but against what kind of country do we want to leave for our children and so on and i also said that uh i asked india's muslims that henceforward none of you should uh should allow anyone to ask you to prove your love for your country least of all those who never took part in the freedom struggle you know and and then that the rest of us and my family is a partition family uh, from displaced from uh, rawalpindi uh, etc i said the rest of us hindus sikhs etc didn't have a choice this was our only country you the india's muslims had a choice did you want to uh, go to a country based on islam or do you want to be in a country uh, which is based on equal respect for all faiths and your parents your grandparents chose india so you are indian by choice the rest of us are indian by chance so you know and, and you know that when you think about that choice that they made i think mahatma gandhi had a great deal to do with you know his his his, his message uh his uh, his uh, his actions uh, you know we can dispute many things in his life but that those last months of his life i think are something that we should hold as a sacred legacy his last fast in delhi two weeks before he was assassinated uh had three demands one of them is better known that the share uh, in in revenues that had to go to pakistan should go but the other two are e- even more important one of them was that they had uh the hindu mahasabha activists and so on and and a lot of the refugees who were very angry yes had converted uh, the mehroli darga uh, the kanot place mosque into temples by putting idols in them he said that you cannot uh, no place of true place of worship can be built uh, based on disrespect to another religion i mean i know mahatma gandhi would not have considered the ram temple and that has been built in ayodhya as a temple because it is based based on uh, on violence against another uh, another religion so he was trying to give us that message so he said my second demand is that each of these places of worship must be returned with respect uh, to the muslim uh, because this is their country as well and thirdly that uh, people who uh, you know uh, the only way refugees who had come from here could get homes at that time were when muslims would leave and so there was violence and a point was being reached when there were more muslims in the relief camps ready to driven out of their homes and he said you must go to the camps and call them back and irfan habib the historian talks about you know the the power he was 19 years old at that time and he says think about a man who can say to somebody who who has been displaced lost their home and their country uh, by muslim mobs it comes here lives in refugee camps at last gets a home now you're telling him go back to the muslim owner of that house and respectfully give him back this home and go back to the refugee camp for, for you to even be able to make that demand to me that is that is the legacy of gandhi that our young people must understand and i'm told that at this last fast even his closest supporters who believed everything i mean monarana nehru 
Patel, all of them said, this is not the time. And there's too much anger. And Gandhi said, this is the only time and I must do it. And uh, they say the first day there were 10,000 people who came out in his support of his fast. By the fifth day, there were one lakh people on the streets of Delhi in his support. Uh, and uh, everybody had to accept his demands. The Hindu Mahasabha had, had to give a written undertaking in returning these places of worship. Yes. That to me is the finest moment of our, uh, you know, of our, you know, becoming a nation. Two weeks later, he was assassinated. And today we are at a time when, uh, when the forces, the ideology that resulted in his assassination are now in triumphal power in our country. And so that battle actually, which he, which he fought so bravely at that time, and then which with Dr. Ambedkar, uh, Nehru and others, we were able to build into our constitution, is now reopened. The constitution, uh, you, know, you may not formally rewrite the constitution, but for all practical purposes, we seem to have abandoned it. Uh, so I think it is, uh, Gandhi has never been as relevant uh, to India. And Gandhiji was not in that some sanitary inspector of Swachh Bharat. He, he stood for this idea of radical love. And that, I think, is... Uh, what is, is to be remembered. That is to be remembered. And there's also a slightly complicated legacy here. For example, the CA protest. Yeah. You know, there was a moment of great anger on part of the farmers and a moment of violence. What would Gandhi have done? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, I don't think... I mean, I've seen both those movements closely. I don't believe that that day of violence in the farmer's struggle was an authentic uh, act of violence by uh, the protesting farmers. It was a subversion of, of, of the peaceful movement. And the anti-CA protests actually, whatever they might say, in fact, now this whole thing is being constructed that the Delhi riots was the outcome of a conspiracy, etc., etc. On the other hand, the CA protesters were the subject of attacks. There were guns. Yeah, 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 yeah. So on, on the contrary, uh, that exactly was the case. Uh, and all of us who actually participated in the freedom in the anti-CA protests are now being charged with uh, with a conspiracy uh, of violence. Uh, so I don't think. In fact, there were acts of violence uh, that that marred both of these movements. But if they were, Gandhiji would have, uh, you know, uh, controversially as he did in in the 1920s, he would have called off the movement. But I don't think that moment had arrived. But there's also legal oppression. You have cases which yeah. are filed and then they continue. Um, would Gandhi have had a take on that? Of course, he would have. You know, I. Uh, I he also had a had a sharp sense of uh, humor, which we uh, which we often don't remember. One that is worth quoting in the 1920s, he was charged with uh, sedition under yes. the sedition law and uh, disaffection against the state. And he said, affection has to be earned; it cannot be forced by the state. And you know, and, and, uh, uh, you know almost a hundred years later, that's exactly what we are saying. Uh, but we're saying more than that. I mean that that I love my country, that's why I criticize it, you know, and, and, and that is, uh, that is what, I, what our freedom struggle was about. And that the government is not uh, the, the supreme leader, what they've created a kind of discourse in which the supreme leader, his, his government, his party, his religious identity and the nation are all one. So, in criticism to any of these is a criticism of it's anti-Hindu, it's anti-national. If you have criticized any action of the state, and uh, and I think that that uh, that Gandhi's legacy also you know, one of uh, the many things I, I recall in these difficult times is that he he said somewhere that I I obey only one dictator, and uh, and you ask him which one, uh, you guess which one. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He said, in fact, he said, I, I obey only one dictator. There's still too, uh, uh, too soft a, a, a voice, some, some, something like that. I, it wasn't loud enough. If, if he said that, then all of us need to think. But he said, it's that voice of conscience is the only dictator, I believe. 
and i think it, in this time the importance of of us holding out our conscience is the other tribute that you know one tribute is is upholding the idea of hindu muslim unity uh, a country of love and inclusion and the other is the freedom to uh, to 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 speak out according to one's conscience which which reminds me uh, when you say speaking uh, he spoke all his life yeah, 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 would, yeah. actually he never stopped uh, conversing <laughs> having dialogue and writing and uh, and you know dialogue is in in the news because of a certain dialogue with the uh, with the rss chief mohan bhagwat that the muslims have held have you ever considered have civil rights activists ever considered that such a dialogue might be fruitful or not fruitful you know i um, what i'll say is will perhaps be a little controversial and i'd like to explain i feel there is huge scope i mean they, they, we must always have open dialogue Uh, within the four walls of the constitution you know i can throw back a question to you suppose we'll say okay the legitimate position and we some we believe in women's equality but uh, but there are people who don't and that's also a legitimate view so let's sit together and have a dialogue giving equal status to anti women's equality and and pro women's equality uh, i would some, say that's not possible yeah you would say that's not possible another person could say you know there are people who feel that uh, you know manusmriti was right about caste and so uh, so equal so to me the rss stands for actually something that is outside what we built as a consensus in the freedom struggle uh, uh, that people of of every religious identity are equal citizens in every respect and and i think that this kind of dialogue that i'm seeing again is legitimizing something that is is illegitimate by national consensus over a long freedom struggle that we fought together in the writing of our constitution either you know uh, either we we actually amend that constitution and let's see what see what happens but as long as this constitution stands i believe a dialogue with with the rss violates legitimizes a uh, A, a whole uh, political social ethical discourse which is uh, which which stands in contravention of the constitutional uh, consensus and therefore it is illegitimate do you also feel that it is actually not a dialogue or a discussion as it it's almost like you know you, 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 it, it's accepting uh, a, a new power relationship uh, you know a de facto we have changed you know we, the constitution may something may say something but we are actually a hindu rashtra of which the icon is this uh, uh, great person who lives with uh, much simplicity etc you know if you it, 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 you have to read the early writings of of the rss which opened the uh, admiring of hitler uh, you uh, you have to read every uh, virtually every judicial commission report Uh, of almost every major riot and the central role is always of the rss you 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 can't suddenly say it's it's such a great nationalist organization because nationalism you know there's a variety of nationalism and i've just come back from germany and i've seen there's a variety of nationalism which is based on i can love my country who i can love my country only if i hate another i i can love my religion only if i hate another we are saying no there's another kind of way of loving your country you love your country and you respect all others uh, i love my religion and i respect all others and and and, uh, and my love is not less it's probably much more authentic in the way that gandhi ji spoke about i mean he was a devout hindu that's why he, he could not bear the idea of desecration of muslim places of worship is hindu muslim uh, is the hindu muslim relationship likely to mend are there ways in which you see that happening yeah i um, i'm still holding on to hope because when you know on one side we see enormous growing radicalization of 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 the hindu heart and mind that is the big accomplishment of the rss over these years so i mean uh, in uh, you know, gurgaon uh, the famous uh, namaz thing i mean you have a city which is exploded many times with migrants you just have two mosques people 
many Muslim migrants have come. They need a place to worship. It's not a big deal. One hour on Fridays. It became made a big issue. And you're familiar with it. Yes. And but I, you know, I was more anxious by the fact that where are these people who turn up on those hundred spots and uh, at on Friday at one o'clock and start wanting to do Hindu prayers or play cricket or do throw cow dung, etc. I mean, it's that mobilization that is that is frightening. But I have hope because there was also a response when people said, what's the problem? Come to our factory. We'll open up our factory That's floor. Right. Come to our homes. Come to the Gurdwaras. That's right. As long as that happens, and you know, because I've studied Germany, it didn't happen in Hitler's time. It was very rare. We still show enough examples of ordinary people reaching out to each other. Okay. So, so, so that is, uh, and, uh, but what I, you know, finally want to say on this question is that I've often uh, said to Muslim friends that, they, you know, they often have this sense of despair that whatever, we, how much we love this country, whatever we might do, we will always be uh, only a minority in this country. And my reply to them was that if the dispute in India was, central dispute in India was between Hindus and Muslims, yes, you'll always be a minority. We can't change that. But I don't see, th I think the central dispute is by people who, uh, follow their own religion or, or belief system uh, and respect all others and or between those who misuse religion uh, for, for fostering hate. And I believe that you and I belong to this first category and uh, the people who are fostering hate are actually still a minority. Uh, I think that is the case. Uh, we have to make sure that they remain a minority. Uh, and the rest of us come together, there's too much at stake. And uh, our only tribute to, uh, to, to Mahatma Gandhi, uh, as I said, his, his most important contribution in the last months of his life would be when he said Muslim child That'll be our tribute to him. Thanks very much. Thank you for your insightful views Thank and you. thanks for joining us. Thank you.